What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Adventures in Rice where we look at ways that you can live better for less. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Chinya Milk Frother so that you can bring that cafe style quality coffee to your home for a fraction of the price. So let's go! <laughs> So have you ever wondered why the coffee you get from the cafe or one of the stands when you're out around town is so much nicer than what you can get at home? But it always comes down to the way they heat and the way they steam the milk. So what you can do now is buy an electric coffee frother like this, which will do the same thing at home. You can get electric whisks, which are much, much cheaper. They run off batteries and it's literally a whisk with a handle. Um, they're not great. They don't heat the milk either. So generally, they're a bit of a waste of time. These electric coffee frothers, they vary in price, anything from around £25 up to 100 for this kind of thing. You can get slightly bigger units for milk steaming, which are up to 220 which personally I think is a bit over the top uh, just to heat some milk. So in the box, you have your instructions. There we go. And the main uh, frothing unit and the base. The base is just like a kettle base. So you've got your UK 24 volt mains um, plug and then your sort of kettle base there which the frother just sits on top of. So super easy to use. Uh, it does come with a lid. I suppose you can use it to stop splashing. Um, I never do to be honest. What you do find as well is you have two attachments. So. What happens is you put the milk in, you press whichever button you need at the front, we'll get into that in a second, um, and it'll spin the milk. And you have two attachments. You have this one here, which is designed to heat the milk, so you get very little froth with this one. And then, built into the lid, you have this one with more of a spring on it. There we go. Uh, same sort of thing, but this is the one that's gonna give you all the, fro all the froth. Um, they literally just come on and off and slide straight into the bottom of the, the base there. Um, whichever one you're not using, you can store in the lid like so. So this particular one is a Chinya one. There are a lot of different ones on the market. Like I say, this, this one's about $29.99. I got it with some Amazon credit I had. There are a lot of other models. Um, they all seem to be almost identical. The handles change and the buttons change. But looking at the inside, you have these little markers um, and they tend to be pretty much identical throughout the whole range. So I don't know how much is actually different. With this particular model, uh, it will take 150 ml of milk or 300. And the reason you have the two different measurements uh, and two different markers inside is the bottom one, the 150 mil is for the big froth. Um, and obviously as it froths, it's gonna come over the top if you put too much in. And then the 300 is the top one for the, the heated milk. So depending on your milk to froth ratio, it's gonna depend which one you use. Okay, so when you plug it in, you have these two marks on here, um, two buttons. You got your bottom one for your cold milk, so you can make things like uh, lattes, cold lattes, things like that, uh, ice, coffee I guess um, what that, that's gonna do is it's gonna give you the froth so obviously it's not gonna heat it but it's gonna give you the froth and then your top button is your heating button so you press that and that'll work on froth mode or heating mode the, the 300 mil mark mode that's the one you're probably gonna use most of the time to be honest okay so they're super easy to use all you have to do is plug it in sit your frother on top of the base Pour in as much milk as you need to the 150 or 300 mil mark, and then press the button as to whether you want hot or cold milk, and then leave it to go. It's on an automatic timer, so when it's finished, it automatically stops, and then you can obviously pour it into your drink. What you then want to do is get a hold of your uh, your coffee. So whether you're using instant coffee, if you've got a Nespresso machine with the pods, that kind of thing, or even hot chocolate, what you want to do is put the coffee in the cup a little bit of hot water, mix it up into more of a paste. It's just gonna make it mix better. Um, and obviously add in as much uh, water as you need for that part. And then once the, the milk's done, you literally just pour it in. And it really is as easy as that. 
Um, it does take a bit of practice to get the right amount of milk. I tend to put in a couple of millimeters underneath the mark for the particular cups I use. Um, and obviously, depending on how big your cup is, it's gonna vary how much you need to, uh, to level it up there. Some of the other models I've seen, they tend to be, I think it was 120 and 160 mil, so they don't hold as much milk. Um, so I went for that one because I like to take coffee when I go into town or if I go to work. Um, obviously, you can put them into things like this, uh, a thermos style cup to take with you to keep things warm, or you've got your reusable plastic coffee style one, uh, which you can take with you. What you can also do, and what I like to do, is if I'm in town and I happen to get a coffee, I usually bring back the the, uh, the cups with me in the car, wash them out, and then you can use them again uh, if you're in a rush to go out somewhere, or you've got somebody else that wants one, you've got your spare cups you can take with you. So what I found personally with this particular one is the froth is either too much or too little for me. Um, I tend to use it on the heat only setting, that gives you a slightly creamy texture to it, especially if you use blue milk instead of green. Um, uh, red milk's gonna be the worst, and I think I saw orange milk recently as well, which is about 1% fat milk. Blue milk, I think, is about 4%. So the higher the fat percentage, the creamier the, uh, the milk's gonna be, the creamier the coffee, and the, um, the more froth you're gonna get out of it, uh, allegedly. But yeah, I find the, um, on the froth mode, it's way too much froth. It's it comes out like this. it falls out. Um, it's like meringue, things like that. And on the heating mode, it's slightly too little froth. Uh, it'd be nice to get somewhere in the middle. I wouldn't recommend it if you wanted to get into things like um, like latte art, doing the little pictures on the coffee and that. I've probably had 50 coffees with this now, and it is incredibly difficult to actually do any kind of pattern um, on the coffee. The one I actually am doing in the video now is probably the worst one I've done so far. Another slight issue I have with this as well is that it seems to heat more on one side. And what you tend to find is once you've made your coffee and you look inside, there's a, a slight amount of, uh, I would say milk scum, but it's sort of caked in milk on, on the one side. And that for me is, it's not great. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It just, it means you've got to clean it more, that's all. So would I recommend the Chinya Milk Frother? Um, I wouldn't spend more than 30 quid on one of these, but if you've got some credit or gift cards or your birthday's coming up, anything like that, and you are a coffee, a coffee addict, then uh, yeah, certainly go for one because you're gonna save money in the long run um, using your reusable plastic coffee cups. And uh, like I say, for a coffee in town, Starbucks, something like that, you're normally looking at 350 to 390 for a mocha. Whereas you can make this at home now and it's going to cost you the, the price of a, a spoon of coffee. So I'll leave a link in the description for this one, the Chinya Milk Frother. Like I say, there are various other ones from Lavazza and Espresso. Uh, there's one called Morocco and Veva, I think. Um, all around the same price. The Lavazza and Espresso ones obviously being a more premium item 